so my friends then started talking to their children. One young man said to his mother, Mom, I wouldn't show that stuff to you. I don't want you to see that. <laughs> and so none of, none of those children, in our, in, 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 and I used to call around an award, their parents didn't know anything about it. Interesting. Thanks for that statement. Did you have something to add, sir? Yeah, a couple of things. Uh, first off, I, I know that some of the legislators who are pushing this uh, are in, say, say that, well, because we're going to be forced through the courts, we're going to head it off and do it ourselves. And uh, one of the challenges to this, in answer to your question about uh, uh, you know, why this shouldn't be taught <coughs> by teachers, is that there are lots of, as Gail mentioned, lots of varying attitudes. And when you have a, a young man or woman who is being taught by a parent who wants to hold to certain moral standards, and yet their friend is getting opt-in course material from their trusted teacher that is totally uh, divergent from what the parent wants, it's going to be a great uh, consternation and, and battle of, of moral uh, uh, premacy in the minds of this child. It's a good point. So there's the peer pressure. Everybody else is in the class, and I'm missing out. And I, I'm the derelict that has to sit at home and talk with mom about this, whereas everybody else gets to go to school and do more interesting stuff. There, that, that, that setting aside of that child is, is something that would be problematic. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. There's one other thought I want to add about. You mentioned this Trojan horse uh, thought, you know, where some things may sound good, but then the Trojan horse is built in. And that is uh, very powerfully true in the science standards. Yeah. Uh, study. Yeah, that's a good point. Thanks. So let's continue on. So the HB 215, it was Reproductive Health Education and Services Amendments. And a consent form was required for this. And actually, I, Noah McElhane, you helped us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I, I'd like, like him to stand up. And if you just stand right there and read that. This is actually from Brian King's bill. And it's pretty lengthy. It's a page and a quarter of, of lined information. This is the consent form. And I'll tell you right now, I want you to pay attention to the topics that will be discussed. And if you feel like this is a robust consent form, or if it's lacking in detail as to what is, uh, what is going to be presented in this class. By the way, Noah's in, in training to be a Navy SEAL. He's going to ship off on February 5th. This is one of our dedicated young fellows who will spend two years learning how to do any number of things, including killing people, which is uh, something that is really amazing as to uh, what he'll be going through to become a Navy SEAL. But, but no, I, I, he's my neighbor and, and a friend of mine, and I appreciate you being here, and he's going to help me by reading through this consent form that was actually itemized in Brian King's bill. So now go ahead and read that piece as to the consent form. <coughs> In accordance with state law, this notice is to obtain the written consent of a parent or legal guardian for a student to receive human health instruction. Your student will not receive human health instruction at a school without your written consent. Human health instruction encourages and facilitates parental or guardian involvement and family communication and is made available to assist parental, guardian, and family discussion about human health education. This instruction helps students develop skills for making responsible and healthy decisions about human sexuality, personal power, boundary setting, developing safe and healthy relationships, and resisting, resisting peer pressure, including not making unwanted verbal, physical, and sexual advances, and not making assumptions about a person's supposed sexual intentions based on that person's appearance. Human health instruction teaches human sexuality as a normal and healthy aspect of human development and includes information about the physical, social, and emotional changes of adolescence and subsequent stages of human matur maturation, including how pregnancy happens. This instruction uses evidence-based information shown to be effective in changing behaviors that contribute to pregnancy at a young age and sexually transmitted diseases and infections including sexual abstinence and delaying sexual initiation. Let me ask you a question right now, I'll just interrupt for a second. Do we, do we want our children to learn about abstinence and pregnancy prevention? Is that, is that something that's meritorious? That's right in the bill. It's very interesting because it talks specifically about abstinence. One, once again, we have to ask the question about the Trojan horse aspect. But Barbara, you had a comment about that? I don't want the school teaching my, my grandchildren anything about 
sex. What if they, uh, what if they what teach you about abstinence and how to protect I against sexual infections and pregnancy? <laughs> Nothing. Because it's a controversial subject right now. I don't want my children, my grandchildren, thinking about these subjects at school. They're not there to learn that. They're, learning, they're there to learn arithmetic, science, and things that have nothing to do with sex. Very good, thanks. Noah, continue reading that. Let's finish that, and then I want to hear your comments about this, this opt-in consent form a parent has to read and sign. Including sexual abstinence and delaying sexual initiation, reducing the frequency of sexual intercourse, reducing the number of sexual partners, and increasing the use of condoms and other contraceptives. <laughs> Your students, class, discussions, and information will focus on how to recognize and respond safely and effectively in situations where sexual or physical violence may be occurring, or where there may be a risk for these behaviors to occur, and discussions on how alcohol and drug use impair responsible and healthy decision making. Classroom discussions will provide instruction about the health benefits and potential side effects of using contraceptives and barrier methods to present to prevent pregnancy, including instruction regarding emergency contraception and the availability of contraceptive methods. Human health instruction is meant to be comprehensive, age-appropriate, reliant on evidence-based information, inclusive of a positive youth development framework, and to provide medically accurate information. Thanks, this sounds like a pretty good consent form. It describes a lot of the details about the class, and just for time's sake, I want you to think about that as to whether it's right or not, as to these, these topics for conversation. But I want you to, to know, so time is, my time is short, and Lisa Ellis is an outstanding speaker and somebody really important for us to hear from. I want to make sure she has time as well. But um, what happened to this bill? So there were over three hours of testimony and debate in the House Education Committee. That's where the bill was heard. And it failed 12 to 2. It's not like it came close. So, so my first comment to the group, is as far as I can tell, this bill didn't have a lot of resonance, and the only two that voted for it, guess who, were the Democrats on the committee. So, and by the way, God bless the Democrats. I'm, that's fine. You want to be a Democrat, but there's not a lot of Democrats up there, and we are the Republicans are a super majority, and we kind of we reflect our people, and our people generally aren't in favor of this. So, so I just want you to understand this bill didn't narrowly <laughs> fail. By the way, the other thing is. It was in the House Education Committee. That's where it had to start. So there's four steps plus the governor's signature, five, and it didn't even make it past step number one. So I want you to, and it not only did it not make it past step number one, but it got exploded on step number one. It failed 12 to two. So you can see Representative King, he's made a promise that he's gonna go back and work with every, every member of the committee, please. Who wrote the bill? Sponsor. I'm sorry, say that again? Who wrote the bill? Yeah, Representative King. He's the House Minority Leader. He's the leader of the Democrats. Okay. Yeah. Well, and those of us in the room might wonder, who did write the bill? Was it, was it actually him, or was it a, a national body of some sort? That's the other component I'm not sure about. But I can imagine that this is not just his bright idea. That there's probably some undercurrent. But I wanted to bring up also, and this is just for time's sake, I'll, I'll get to you in just a second, but um, so Representative Fawson has a proposal, and Elise is probably going to talk to us more about this, but a media report, the proposal is not out yet formally, but Representative Fawson, Fawson from Ogden is drafting a bill that would tailor the state's education, sex education curriculum to individual students by creating a suite of optional web-based lessons as an alternative to classroom instruction. And then I put in that quote of parents having an opportunity to sort of flex and bend and use whatever they want. I think that's intriguing, frankly for me, and I'll just kind of boil this down in my statements. It is, this is not the venue for us to talk about this stuff. And my question to you, as a public, as grandparents and as parents, when was the last time you sat down with those that you love that are coming into this, a 12 or a 15 or an 18 year old person, and had a conversation about sexual issues. And I can imagine that as I go around this room, that probably has not happened very often in this room uh, with different people. I hope you've done that. I'm just thinking for myself. I've got eight children. When was the last time I sat down with them and had these conversations? We just kind of march forward day by day, taking care of the, the needed routines. But meanwhile, our children are confronted with challenges. 
And this is a government response to deal with those challenges in this issue. But I'll warn you, if you and I aren't going to do it, we're not going to have these conversations with our loved ones. Somebody else is going to step in and do that for you. And you may be disappointed with how that actually is effectuated. So, so part of this is making sure that you are aware of what's out there that you're taking as a liberty-minded group of people. You're taking the responsibility upon yourself to do that which you think you should do. My friend in the back. Okay. I was just going to point out, you said that he's pledged to, to meet with all these people and come to some, some sort of agreement, things that people would be more comfortable with, maybe. He did that last year. Right. So he met with about 10 different people from different groups. I was in those committee meetings with him. And we had we had people from, I'll tell you, both sides of the aisle in there. Right. And what we saw in there is this really is being driven primarily by um, sex health therapists, especially Mormon ones. They seem to be the biggest push behind it and convincing him that he needs to keep trying. So, so why would those people be motivated to have this institutionalized in our schools? I, I'd, like, I'd like a comment on that. I, I need to get hooked off the stage so Lisa can take over. But, but do you have a, why, why are those, if you're saying Mormon sex therapists are motivated to get this to change, why do they care about this? Money. Money. Okay, same, maybe. The same reason Planned Parenthood is in it. Okay. Business. Any other reasons? Oh, yeah probably have a lot of sexual problems in our state that we just don't know about in this group. The, the sad thing about the doctor world is I see so much damage, and I imagine those people see so much damage, and frankly the Me Too movement and all these claims that are meritorious or not as to sexual molestation or harassment, they're real. And I'm warning you in this room, there's probably five, usually women, not always, not always, but usually women, there's probably five sexual molestation victims right in this room right now, maybe more. And the, those that, so it may be money, it may be power, it may be some other reason, but the sex therapists, the doctors, the people that may push this may actually see something that you don't know about, that you don't see, or that you're not aware of. So, so is that true or not? I don't know, but I do know that I see my share of troubles and this, this is on some level somebody's effort to try to improve those troubles. We had a comment on the back. I read the story of Maria Von Trapp, and she said they never thought about sex. They were out being kids, right. hiking mountains, and it's our society that's infiltrated with the media, what you see in Hollywood and on TV, and then we try to put a band-aid on it by teaching them about sex. Right. When we've created our own problems by sexualizing our children, it's, it's sad to watch, but go to the local clothing store and have a look at the undergarments that the girls have to choose from, starting at age five and seven and 10, and see if you can find a pair of plain undergarments that doesn't have lace and colors and sort of Victoria's Secret tendencies in them. And, and then we wonder why we have these issues. So, so I, I'm gonna, Sit down. I appreciate the, the comments. I'd like to hear more, but I want to hear from Elisa too. But thanks for your tolerance, and we'll turn the time over to Elisa.